No way, really? <laughs> Well, it's a good day to die. Hooker Hay documents the life and extraordinary adventures of British conflict photographer Jason P. Howe. Taking six years to make, this is the story of a man who chose to stare death in the face in pursuit of the perfect shot. But at what personal price? To tell us more about this remarkable film, please welcome to the cafe its director, Harold Bonfils. Welcome. Yes. Thank you very much. Welcome, Harold. So tell us about the name to begin with. Uh, a good day today, Hooker Hay. What is what is Hooker Hay? What does it mean? Well, the. The name came in two stages. When it was a working title, it was Hokkaihei, because Jason has the title of the film actually tattooed on the inside of his arm. He got that tattooed in the tricolors of the Colombian flag when he was working in Colombia. Okay. And when he got it done, he was told that it meant a good day to die. The actual translation of Hokkaihei is actually Lakota Indian, which is Sioux, American Sioux Indian, which means let's roll. Right. So through working through the film, and that Hawkeye has a very apt title to the to, mm. to a profession like that also. So I ended up calling the film a good day to die, Hawkeye Hay, which means a good day to die. Let's roll. How do you like choose it. the subject that you're going to do? I would imagine you're constantly trawling and thinking. But how did you end up at this point? In 2010, I decided I wanted to do a biography film, and I spent about three months just researching people, people with incredible stories, and you realize how many incredible people are out there. There really. are, yeah. A war photographer was not on the, on the table at that time, but uh, through a friend, he, he mentioned his name, so I did my research, got in touch with him, we did a screen test, and he was fantastic on camera. I mean, his story is just, it's like the adventures of Tintin. This is where we started. So if Tintin was a conflict photographer, mm. His name would be Jason P. Howe. So tell us a little bit about the sort of adventures he has. I mean, what happens? I've read books about this sort of thing, but I've never seen it on the screen. Well, Jason leaves his house in his early 20s, uh, having grown up in a little town in Ipswich in the UK. And so it's a pretty protective little lifestyle. Mm. And he decides to go to Columbia, work on a love project, and he works on a book. And um, he ends up working with the FARC, then realizing that the FARC are not telling him the true side. He's not seeing the child soldiers. He's not seeing the drug trade and everything else. He decides to go meet the, the arch enemies, which is the paramilitary. Mm -hmm. So he moves to a different part of the country, which is completely disconnected, so there's no crossover. Starts working with the paramilitary. And he ends up working in Columbia for several years, and he ends up releasing his book. Meanwhile, that journey, he meets somebody else when, because he went to France. And he meets somebody by the name of Seamus Collin, and Seamus Collin sends him to Iraq. So from Iraq, he goes back to Colombia, then from Iraq. And that was a natural progression of Jason being a homemade photojournalist mm -hmm. where he started to being a professional and being amazingly good at it because he was a great photographer from the beginning. So that was really cool. And so from practically, he goes from Colombia, he goes to Iraq, he ends up covering the Lebanese, uh, Lebanon War, and then he ends up in Afghanistan. I would imagine, as a director, if it takes six years to make this journey possible, how many of those years were you with Jason? And was that scary? Well, I didn't see, for the sample, we cover this in the film a little bit about the government censorship and what you can't show from the front lines and everything else. So I didn't see the purpose of me going to the front line because you got the soldiers doing what they do, and then you got Jason mm -hmm. shooting the soldiers doing what they do to tell us what the stories are. And there'd be a bit of response for me to put a life of another civilian. Right. Because Jason is a civilian, too. A story too. about a story about a story, yeah. So, you know, yeah. It, it, yeah. We're going, there's people out there. I'm not a war photographer, mm -hmm. you know, and I'm not a war cinematographer. I'm a storyteller. I'm a filmmaker. And there's people out there that are there with the cameras, and they're trained for this, and they know what they're doing. So for me, it was more about finding people that on the field that could shoot what mm -hmm. I needed them to shoot. And, and Jason obviously was a big part of this because... He would shoot himself with a head cam and everything else. I mean, after he's done his own interviews on the field, it's on the basis of the story was fresh in his head. And this is, these are parts of the film we did use, obviously, at the same time. I tell you what, let's have a look at a little bit of the film okay. right now. Kind of always loved the idea of a short and interesting life, you know, rather than a long, dull one. Colombia is one of the most dangerous countries in the world. Photojournalist Jason Howe has spent several years documenting the civil war there. I remember Jason coming home and saying he had met a girl. 23 personas que matado. I certainly didn't know he was going to be sleeping with a female assassin. Oh, that 
that looks so good. It looks that incredible. Is, yeah, no, sold. And with all the fake news, I guess, we know of nowadays, documentaries are the way to understand. So thank you for bringing this story to life, Harold. Thank you for having me. Yeah. Absolute That's pleasure. Absolutely great. Also thank a bit you. of a love story in there with a female assassin, but we'll get into that another time. Yes. A Good Day to Die, Hoka Hay is showing us part of the uh, Doc Edge Fest, and Harold will be also attending special Q&A screenings as well, so you can ask him the questions. Go to docedge.nz for details.